Hey, Robbie, your mom just messaged me. She asked if you want us all to go out for dinner on Saturday for Sunday. Which day do you think is best? You mean this weekend? Yeah. Sorry, I can't do either. I'm busy this weekend. Huh? Why? Do you have plans? you never believe it, babe. My boss invited me out to play golf with him. Oh, I see. Well, your mom did say either Saturday or Sunday is fine. Surely you're not golfing with your boss both days. Yeah, I am. I swear, it feels like all he talks about is golf these days. He's totally obsessed. He went around inviting all the guys at work, but no one else is really into it, so they all turned him down. I felt bad for him, and, well, yeah, I ended up agreeing to go both days like the sucker I am. Wow, he must be completely addicted if he's dragging you down there on both your days off. I wonder if he realizes he's keeping you away from your family. Yeah, I think it's because he knows you don't have kids. I get that people with kids probably wouldn't be crazy about the idea of spending all their days off golfing with the boss. But just because we have kids doesn't mean I don't want to spend time with you. Does he think about that when he's pestering you to go with him? I hope he's a little more considerate in the future. You said it, babe. Don't worry, I told him this weekend was the only time I'd be able to hang out with him this month. That's good. No worries, sweetie. I'll talk to your mom about rescheduling the dinner for next week. Sorry, I feel bad now. It's okay. If anything, I'm the one who should be worried about you. You seem to be at work all the time lately. Are things busier than usual there? To think you're now spending your days off with your boss, too. Is everything okay? I hope you're not overdoing it, honey. You know we all have our limits, and there's no shame admitting you need some chill time. It's cool. I'm fine. Actually, I guess I have been kind of exhausted lately. I hit the hay as soon as I get home these days. I'm out like a light the second my head hits the pillow. It's no wonder you're tired with all the hours you've been working. You're out on the first train in the morning and home on the last train at night. I'm surprised you're still able to function on a schedule that hectic. Sorry you get left to do all the housework, babe. I know we should be splitting it down the middle because we both work, but I just haven't had time lately. It's fine, sweetie, don't worry. I can tell how busy you are. I know housework is the last thing you need on your plate right now. Oh yeah, did you want a lunch making for our work tomorrow? A lunch? Why? Didn't you say you were eating store-bought junk for lunch and dinners most days? A healthy body is a healthy mind, honey, so there's only so much a person can take running on food like that. Will you let me make you a healthy lunch? I'd feel so much better if you were eating something healthy at least once a day. It's fine, really. Besides, you have work too. You don't need to worry about me. Plus, won't making healthy lunches for me take ages? I can have something ready to go in 30 minutes. Piece of cake. But 30 minutes out of your morning is a lot. Why make life harder than it has to be? You already do enough for me. I don't eat junk food every day, I promise. Going to Peep Mark on my lunch break is part of my routine now. And it's not like it's all unhealthy there. Some of their sandwiches have lettuce in, you know. You know how it is. Health foods are fashionable these days. They have whole sections for people trying to lose weight and keep fit. I even bought a salad and an apple last week. I'm glad to hear you're at least conscious of this stuff. Doesn't store-bought stuff all the time get boring, though? Nope, it's not like I eat the same thing every day. I go to the convenience store near the office. My culinary life is jam-packed with variety, I promise. Really? Well, okay, in that case, I won't make you anything. But if you ever change your mind, just say the word and I'll rustle you something up. Got it, I will. Thanks for thinking of me, babe. I appreciate you. I'm going to do my best to get on top of everything at work so things finally calm down. Hopefully we can fit in some us time real soon. Robbie, are you there? Where are you right now? Why aren't you home yet? It's 2 a.m. in the morning. Is everything okay? I'm so worried. I can't sleep. Please respond. Sorry, I must have snoozed. You were asleep? At work? Surely your office is closed at 2 a.m. in the morning. No, I'm in an internet cafe. An internet cafe? I was sure it must be something to do with work. Why are you in an internet cafe, and why didn't you come home? The boss asked me to stay for overtime, and I came while I was on my nighttime break. I brought with some snacks. I don't even plan on being here for like 30 minutes. 
I thought it might be nice to watch some videos on PeepTube. Away from the crazy atmosphere of the office while I ate. It's just nice to get away from the place sometimes, you know? I swear I planned on being out within 30 minutes, but I must have fallen asleep. Ah, uh, most net cafes work on an automatic extension system, right? Right. That's why no one woke me up. I see. Yeah, that was a relief. I was so worried about you. You always seem kind of gloomy whenever I see you at home lately. I couldn't help but wonder if something was wrong. Huh? Wait, what? I seem gloomy? Yeah, you never eat with me either. You're almost never home. It was the same when we went for dinner with your mom recently, too. No sooner had you taken the last bite of your hamburger than you were up and out of the restaurant like a hurricane. Your mom just looked at me with this blank expression and said that was weird. Something has to be up when even your mom is saying stuff. Oh, that. I uh, got invited out by my friend that day. I was in a rush is all. Nothing weird, babe, honest. How do you have time for all these social appointments when you're so busy with work? You probably fell asleep because you don't even give your body a chance to rest in your days off. Tiredness is bound to catch up with you when you're constantly running around like a headless chicken. Maybe you're right. You must feel so stiff after falling asleep in an internet cafe. Sit tight, honey. I'm going to come pick you up in the car. We'll get you home in a jiffy and you can get a good night's sleep. No, 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 it's fine. You really don't have to do that. Huh? But the trains aren't running anymore. It's 2 a.m. I know that, but I don't want to make you drive at this time. I'm here now, so I think I'm going to browse PeepTube a little while longer. Um, you do have work tomorrow, right? Sure, but it's fine. I'll just go straight from the net cafe. They have showers. What about changing your clothes? It's the middle of summer, Robbie. You must have been sweating buckets today. You're going to stink the place out if you go to the office like that tomorrow. I really think you should at least come and get changed. Yeah, it's cool. I'll get a new pair of underpants from the store. There are showers here so I won't smell. I promise. <laughs> Just relax. You have work tomorrow too, babe. You should hurry up and sleep. But Robbie... Don't worry about me. Do you promise me everything's okay? You're not in any trouble, are you? I'm fine. Jeez, Viv, what's the problem? It's not like I do this all the time. So what if I want to spend some time by myself sometimes? That's totally fine with me. I don't know, Robbie. Something just seems different about you lately. God damn it, woman. You're like a broken record. How many times do I gotta say I'm fine? F-I-N-E. I really wish you wouldn't speak to me like that. I only say these things because I'm concerned about you. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm totally normal. You're the weird one. You say all this weird crap about me being gloomy or acting strange. How do you think that makes you feel when you grill me like this? Have you even considered that? I'm sorry. I never meant to upset you. I'm just worried. Well, give it a freaking rest already. Who are you, my mom? You're always bugging me with crap like, Are you eating properly? Do you need a change of clothes? You gonna start banning me from eating candy next? You're such a heckin' pain in my backside! Fine. Say no more. I'll keep my mouth shut from now on. God, what a relief. I never thought I'd live to see the day. I don't have time to play your games. I'm busy. Viv, I'm sorry. Huh? Why? Did something happen? I won't be coming home for a little while. Why not? I never told you this, but my health hasn't been great for some time now. I went to the hospital and I got a diagnosis. I'm not well. Really? Really, listen babe, the truth is... Really, listen babe, the truth is... I only have half a year left to live. I don't want to burden you. I think we should get a divorce. You have a year left to live? Divorce? Are you serious? Yes, I have terminal cancer. The sooner you forget about me, the better. All I want is for you to be happy. I'm so sorry for how selfish I've been. It's cool, don't sweat it. I'm taking all of your assets. Now get the hell out of this house. Or rather, come and get your stuff as soon as you can, then disappear forever. 
I'm sure it won't be easy since you're ill, but good luck. Don't worry, I'll at least go to your funeral. <laughs> huh? Wait, you're taking my assets? Sure, let's face it. You won't need any of them if you're going to be dead in six months. We have to put my name on the deed of the house, too. Oh, man, I just have so much to do. That's all you have to say? I just told you I'm terminally ill, you psycho! I just told you I'm going to die soon and you're talking about money in the house? Have you no heart? How could you? You're the one who said we're getting a divorce because you didn't want to burn me. Were you hoping I'd break down in tears and beg you not to change your mind? No, it's not like that at all. Hmm, actually, scratch that. On second thought, if I'm going to take all your assets, it's better that we don't divorce. You only have half a year left. Would it really kill your weight? <laughs> Forgive me, that was cruel. But I'd rather we got a divorce. It's cool. It's only six months. It'll fly by before you know it. I'll look after you while you get ready to depart the mortal realm. I don't want you to see me grow weak and frail. I couldn't bear to have you look after me. To see me in that state, I'd feel so pathetic, so guilty. Fine, have your way. Don't think I'll visit you in the hospital if you're being like this, though. I'll go to the funeral and that's it. That okay with you? Um, well, I was kind of hoping you wouldn't come to my funeral either. What's the problem? It's not like I'd see you. You'll be in a coffin, right? What, were you planning on doing with your assets when you kicked the bucket? Uh, well, I was gonna give everything to my parents and, uh, you know, some friends and relatives. Well, we've been together three years, Robbie. I'm your wife. Don't you plan on leaving me even a little bit of money? Is that how little I mean to you? It's not gonna be easy getting by on my own, you know. You do know that if we divorce, you get half my stuff, right? Why are you so opposed to the idea? I'm not stupid. I know that only applies to our shared assets. I guess. Are you really clinging on to this so desperately to your material possessions when you barely have five minutes left to live? I have a whole six months. They'll be so insensitive. Besides, chemotherapy doesn't exactly come cheap. Can't you scrape by somehow or other these last six months on your own personal savings? Look, just because the doctor said I have six months left to live doesn't mean I'm suddenly going to die exactly six months from today. Sometimes people live a few months longer than expected, sometimes years. There's no predicting the future, and I'm not about to make any reckless decisions I could live to regret. I read about one guy who lived a whole three years when the doctors told him he had a few months. That's all the more reason for us not to divorce if you ask me. We have no idea how much this is all going to cost you. But I don't want to rely on you financially, babe. I feel pathetic enough as it is. Please, just let me keep hold of my pride. It's all I have left. I don't see any benefit in divorcing. If you wanted to divorce because you hate me all of a sudden, then that would be one thing. Or like, if you met someone else or something. Wait, is that it? No way, that's not it, I swear. Then I'm sorry, Robbie, but I just don't understand. If you really didn't want to burden me, then you wouldn't go springing divorce on me after telling me you had terminal cancer. You're right. Let's just forget this conversation ever happened. I think I might be more sensitive than usual because the stress of it all is just too much to handle. I said some things I shouldn't. You mean the divorce is off? Yeah, I guess I can rethink things. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Right then, it's settled. We're not getting a divorce. Will you be coming home today? Yeah, I will. I want to take some time alone to calm down, though. I feel like I'm losing my head. I need to rethink my behavior. Got it. I'm going to lock the front door now. It's getting late. Message me when you're back, okay? Viv, you got a minute? I have some good news to tell you. Nice timing. I was just about to message you with some news of my own. Mind if I call you? Sorry, I'm supposed to be on my lunch break, but I'm still in the office. Uh, can we do it over a message? Sure. Okay, well, why don't you go first? It's about my illness. I got a call from the hospital this morning. They found out it was a false diagnosis. A false diagnosis? So you're not terminally ill with six months left to live? That's right. 
Almost makes you want to burst out laughing, right? Well, that and a mixture of anger. Like, seriously? They couldn't have dotted their I's and crossed their T's a little bit better than that? I think I should get a payout for all the stress it caused me. Basically, I'm totally fine. The truth is, I couldn't be healthier. We have nothing to worry about anymore. Wow, that's great, Robbie. You don't have to tell me, though. I already knew. Huh? You knew? How? That you weren't sick. There was no cancer, no false diagnosis, nothing. It was all a big fat pack of lies from the very beginning. What the heck are you talking about? It was all just some moronic plan to break up with me. No, 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 it's true I'm not sick, but... But the doctors really did tell me I only had six months left to live. Yeah, yeah, whatever. We can go with that if you like. What the hell is with your attitude all of a sudden? You know what? Screw it. I might be totally fine, but I want a divorce. Oh, wow, you do? Why is that? You were just as horrible to me back when I told you I was dying. You did nothing but make fun of me. It's like it was all one big joke to you. I just told you that I had terminal cancer, but all you did was talk about materialistic crap like my assets, the house, and money. I've seen your true colors now, woman, and they can't be unseen. I can't take this toxic attitude of yours anymore. I might not be terminally ill, but I'll end up at an early grave if I spend any longer with you. Is it any wonder if I'm being like this after finding out you've lied to me about having cancer? You're sick in the head. Unlike you, I'm being honest. Go on. You were hoping I'd break down in tears, weren't you? You must have been so disappointed when I saw right through your lies. I wasn't lying. I don't lie. That's not the man I am. Okay, prove you're at the hospital. You don't get a terminal diagnosis without having some kind of documentation. Receipts, diagnosis certificates, appointment letters, anything will do. I'm not picky. I don't have anything left. I tossed it all in the trash because of all the bad memories attached to it. Okay, fine. Let's go with that. Must have been pretty big hospital if they gave you a terminal diagnosis, right? They usually send a bunch of follow-up stuff, but in your case, I imagine you should get some kind of apology letter. I'll keep my eye out on the post box. Forget that bullshit. I want a divorce. What? <laughs> that was sudden. You were always were quick to anger. Life married to you is a fate worse than hell. I'm sick and tired of it, and I want out. I feel like you try to find fault with everything I say. You're not wrong. I'm doing it on purpose. I never knew you were this much of a spiteful lowlife. You've made me sick. I should be happy because I just found out I'm not dying. But I feel sad now because of you. I get it. You fake terminal cancer divorce plot failed. So now you're flipping out at me. You couldn't write this stuff. If you're that desperate to divorce me, we'll just get it over with. You will be paying me compensation, though. Huh? Compensation? Why would I have to pay you compensation? Because you're cheating on me. What? I'm not cheating. No way. I wouldn't do that. That's not the man I am. What are you talking about? This makes zero sense. I know everything, Robbie. You can stop lying to me now. Go on, it might actually feel good to tell the truth for once. Abby, the 28-year-old waitress from the Italian restaurant near your company building. Her family runs a restaurant, and she's been working there part-time for years. Her parents were furious when they found out what their daughter was up to. And not just with her. You turned their precious daughter into damaged goods by wrecking her reputation. What the? Wait a sec, how in the holy Jesus balls did you know all this stuff? How? This makes less than zero sense. Yeah, that's right. Minus sense. That's what this makes. Explain. Because I headed over to the restaurant to speak to her. I arrived just before she went off for her lunch break. She told me everything. Who the hell do you think you are getting involved in my private life like that? God, what have you done? I really liked Abby. She said I was her special chocolate love muffin. You idiot. Me and her were going places before you stuck your freaking nose in. Phew, looks like the lies finally stopped. I thought I'd never see the day. Damn it! You lied about everything so I wouldn't hate you, and more importantly, so I wouldn't demand compensation. 
You did everything you possibly could to get out of this marriage without looking like the bad guy. You really are a grade-A moron. Why didn't you just say from the start if you knew? I needed some time to think, and plus I figured the longer I let you expose yourself as a slimeball you really are, the better. Abby won't be able to cope without me. Her dad's a master chef, but her cooking sucks balls. She can be clumsy, and he's constantly yelling at her for something or other. That said, she's so bubbly and cheerful, she lights up any room the second she walks in with her big, radiant smile. She's kind, caring, and to tell you the truth, she makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. I see. But you, Viv, you'd be absolutely fine on your own. You're confident and independent. You work a full-time job with a decent salary. You can do housework and generally take care of yourself. You don't need me around one bit. Just because I'd be capable of making it on my own if we split up doesn't mean I wouldn't be hurt. Oh, come on, babe. Don't be dramatic. That baby be over me in a week. And yet you insist on clinging to me like a goddamn rash. Why are you so intent on destroying my happiness? The only one who destroyed your happiness is you. Why do you think I can cook? You think I came out of the womb with a frying pan in my hand? The only reason I got good is because you used to nag and complain at me when your food wasn't up to scratch. To be honest, I never really enjoyed it. I just did it to make you happy. And don't even get me started on the housework. I wanted you to have a nice clean house to come back to after work, so I went out of my way into a regular housework routine. I never asked you to do that. Maybe not directly, but you damn sure let me know when things weren't up to standard, didn't you? Anyway, whatever. I should be thanking you. You're making me hate you so much that I probably will forget about you quickly. That's great. I'm pleased it's finally looking like we're going to be able to go our separate ways without any drama. I've been wanting to give Abby the wedding of her dreams for a long time now. She's going to be over the moon when I finally pop the question. Now we can be together for real. What are you talking about? You two are not getting married. We promised each other we're going to get engaged. Oh yeah, that's weird, because she says there's no way she's marrying you. You seem to be forgetting the minor detail of you not telling her you were already married. I shouldn't have to tell you this, but lies of that magnitude tend to make people change their opinions of you. She was so shocked, she fainted. What? She didn't know she was dating a cheating scumbag. She broke down in tears when she found out she'd been playing an active role in destroying a marriage. You're right, she seems like a nice girl. At least she has a sense of basic right and wrong, unlike some people. She says she never wants to see you again. No way, you have to be lying. What the hell? She isn't answering my calls. Uh, she must be busy on her lunch break or something. Nope, she took some time off work. You broke her heart, Robbie. Abby and her parents were all in agreement. She was in no state to be going to work. Oh my god, are you serious? Is she really breaking up with me? Duh. She promised me it was over between you two. Her dad said if you ever showed up at their restaurant again, he's going to kick the crap out of you and toss you down the front steps head first. Oh my god, no! Stop this! You have to undo what you did, please! Don't tell her it was all lies, I'm begging you! You can have as much compensation as you want. Just name your price. I'm begging you, Viv. You for real? You must be even more deluded than I thought. You can't seriously think I'd do that. Please, Abby's all I have left. I'm begging you! I'll do anything. I swear, what do you want? Money? A car? A holiday? Just name it and it's yours. There is something I want you to do for me, actually. I want you to sign the divorce papers and pay me my compensation. I'll pay up, I swear. Please, I'm begging you. Just tell Abby you lied about us being married. Why would I do favors for the lying scumbag who cheated on me? Do you have any idea how much pain and suffering you've put me through? Do you have any idea how much it hurt to find out the man I love was lying to me and seeing someone else behind my back? It was a pure mental torment. My mind was constantly plagued with thoughts like, why is this happening to me? What did I do wrong to deserve this? What do I have to do to make things right? But then I realized my doubts were aimed in the wrong direction. You're the one who's at fault, and you're the one who's going to pay. I'm so sick and tired of hearing your lies. I'm actually pleased now. My mind is clear, and I feel nothing but gratitude that it's finally all going to be over soon. 
Don't try and turn me into a liar, too. I'm sorry. There, look, I apologize. So won't you please help me out? Just one last time for old time's sake? Good sake all my assets for all I care. I'm going to take all your assets as part of the compensation anyway. So forget your bribes. I'd sooner stick pins in my eyes than help you for one millisecond. We'll be continuing this discussion through our lawyers. Goodbye. Please, wait! Surely we don't need lawyers to have a conversation. Just hold on, I'm begging you. I'm so, so sorry, Viv. You didn't do anything wrong ever. It was all me. I'm the bad guy here. All me. I did this for you. I know now the way I went about it. I was wrong, but the only reason I did it was because I wanted to get a divorce without hurting you. I figured if I told a little white lie or two, I could soften the blow. So, pretending to have cancer is a little white lie now? Don't make me laugh. You were only thinking about yourself, just like always. You can have your divorce now. I know what a selfish lowlife you are. Now, stop messaging me. I'm busy. The naive, gullible Vib who didn't realize what a deceptive lying piece of trash you are is gone, and she's never coming back. After that, I divorced my husband. I was awarded all of his assets and a huge amount of compensation for the affair. We still hadn't paid off the mortgage on the house, so I'm letting him stay there. The place is full of bad memories for me now, so I wouldn't want to stay even if I could. Obviously, I reclaimed everything I'd ever paid into. I'm sitting on a nice pile of cash now. I have no idea what I'll spend it on, but I'm thinking of treating myself to something nice. I heard Robbie showed up at Abby's family restaurant countless times after the events of today's saga. Naturally, her dad didn't take too kindly to the scumbag who lied to his daughter, inviting himself inside his restaurant. And he was seen chasing my ex-husband down the street with a baguette while yelling expletives on multiple occasions. Eventually, the police were called. Between that and the fact that Abby told him very clearly she never wanted to see him again for as long as she lives, he had no choice but to give up. Unable to bear the shock, and now a mentally crippled, chronically depressed mess, Robbie quit his job and is now living on his own in our old house while paying off the remainder of the mortgage. I don't know what's going to happen to him from here on out, but since his entire family disowned him out of sheer disgust for his actions, something tells me his future is going to be a lonely one. He can wallow in the pain of regret for what he did for the rest of his life for all I care. He has no one left now, and that's the way it should be. You don't get to lie about having cancer and get away with it. What goes around comes around. I bought myself a nice new apartment with my compensation money after the divorce. Back when I thought my husband was acting strange and decided to do some digging. My days were filled with nothing but hopelessness and despair. And honestly, I didn't even feel like I was alive. To tell you the truth, it didn't get better straight away after the divorce either. It took me a few months before I really started to get over the shock of what he did to me. But this whole thing has made me realize how blessed I am to be surrounded by such an amazing support network of family and friends. And thanks to them, I feel like I'm finally coming back to my old self. Life's full of up and downs, and it's always darkest before the dawn. I know I've had my fair share of downs, but that just means the ups must be just around the corner. Wearing the lessons of the past as armor, I'm going to carry on attacking life with everything I have to build a future full of happiness.